Hi folks, the Filipina Pi here, and as promised, here's your Mailbag Friday video. I've gone through hundreds of emails and chosen the ones that are not only the most entertaining, but the ones that will be most relevant to your interest in the Philippines. And just wait till you see what I got for you today. We have a Filipina shutterbug who's driving her man crazy. A man who wants to take the easy way out by getting an instant girlfriend. And a man who's afraid his Filipina wife might be trying to kill him. This is gonna get interesting. So our first question is from Jason T. in General Santos. Jason writes, Dear P, I wanted to ask you about a strange habit I've noticed with almost every Filipina I've ever dated. I don't know if this is a female thing or a cultural thing, but it can be funny and annoying at the same time. Why does a Filipina take so many pictures, even of boring, everyday things like a hundred variations of herself standing in a doorway? And whenever she's with friends or family, it gets ten times worse. She'll take endless photos of the same thing with only minor differences, like all of them sitting on a couch, and then all of them standing against a wall, and then having them switch places and doing it all over again. If they go anywhere or do anything, it has to be photographed from the car they drove in to the parking spot they parked in. The other day, my girlfriend was complaining that her phone was always out of memory and that it wouldn't save the short video she just filmed. When I look at her phone, it was jammed with literally thousands of photos and the stuff that was on there was just ridiculous. When I suggested that she might want to delete most of the boring crap, at least all the duplicates, she had an almost violent reaction. My question is, is this normal? And if so, what do you guys do with all those photos? Does anyone even look at them? Well, Jason, that's an interesting question, and I bet it's both a female thing and a Filipina thing. Maybe Western women have the same habit? I really wouldn't know, but the stereotype of the picture-snapping Asian is alive and well in the Philippines. Now, I'm not a good example of this because I'm not like that. I actually hate having pictures taken, and I mostly only do it for work. If you look at my phone, you'd find a bunch of different poses of the same thing, but it's just because I need them for my thumbnail pics when I'm trying to get the perfect pose. And after I'm done with it, I delete them. But yes, I know exactly what you're talking about, and here's why we do it. First, it's a way to brag. It might look silly to you when we take a picture of a hamburger, but to us, it might represent something we don't get to do a lot, like eating out. If you ever took us to an amusement park, we'd probably spend more time taking pictures than riding rides. And as soon as we get home, we'd post them on Facebook, not only to share the adventure with others, but as a form of bragging. Kind of like saying, look what I got to do. Filipinas are big users of social media. In fact, we spend more time on social media than anyone else in the world. So it's no surprise that we want to collect a lot of pictures to put on there, even different shots of the same place. Because if we haven't done anything exciting for a while, we'll often go back and post an old photo and make it look like we did something new. The reason we don't like to delete anything is for the same reason we collect empty pens and bottles and jars. You just never know when you'll need them. And trying to get a Filipino to part with an old photo is like trying to pry a gold coin away from a leprechaun. If something has any value at all, a Filipino will save it. And that includes photos of grandma's bunions. I know you're not trying to change your girlfriend because it's not a battle worth fighting. But for her birthday, just buy her some extra storage on the cloud. And make sure to take lots of pictures of the cake. Okay. The next question comes from Jeremy H. in Vancouver, Canada. Jeremy says, P, I've watched a lot of your videos and I've heard you say that in order to find a woman, it's better to come to the Philippines in person. But it's almost impossible to avoid wanting to talk to Filipinas online before going there. As long as I don't send them any money, what's the harm? Pretty much all I know about Filipinas is what I've seen in the videos. So wouldn't it be a good idea to start talking to them as soon as possible? And that way, I'd already have someone I could go meet. Okay, Jeremy. 
fair question, and it's something a lot of guys wonder about. I couldn't even put a number on all the times someone says they want to meet a Filipina, but they're not ready to come to the Philippines until they find someone worth making the trip. It's kind of like a chicken or the egg situation. And if you're not planning on coming to the Philippines at all, it makes perfect sense to go online. Although if your plan is to bring her back to the West before meeting in person, I think you're playing with fire and you're probably gonna end up getting burned. Thinking that you can just pluck a woman out of her own culture and ship her to your door like a pizza is a stupid move. She might not be hot or fresh and you won't get your money back. So the following advice is for those of you who are smart enough to realize that you're gonna have to make a trip over here first to check things out. And you might decide that going online is a good tool to facilitate the process. The question is, when? I have nothing against dating sites per se. They're a legitimate business like any other. But in my opinion, paying a membership fee so you can talk to Filipinas is like paying for a picture of a snowflake right before you hop on a plane to the North Pole. But more important than saving a few bucks, it's also not in your best interest. And here's why. Even if you swear to yourself that this isn't going to happen, here's what usually happens. You put a profile on a dating site, and within 24 hours, you get about 200 responses. Sounds great, right? You're amazed that you got so much attention because it's the exact opposite of what happens if you try the same thing in the West. But you quickly realize that 90% of the women that contacted you are either married, too young, too old, barely speak English, or they just want your money. So you take the 20 women that remain and start chatting with them. After barely getting any sleep for the next two weeks because your phone is blowing up, you decide to whittle them down into a manageable number, maybe the best five, and you tell yourself you're going to keep it at that number so you'll have options once you get there. Famous last words. <laughs> That's almost never what happens because over the coming months, you start building a relationship with your favorite because just like cars and restaurants and football teams, there's gonna be a favorite. And she's gonna make sure you don't have time to talk to anyone else by constantly bombarding you with texts and photos and video chats. And long before your flight arrives in the Philippines, you're gonna wake up one morning and realize you've got a girlfriend. Now, how did that happen? Oh well, now you've got someone to show you around. Someone that can take care of everything from the moment you touch down. And that's exactly what she'll do. She'll be waiting for you at the airport. And she'll spend every single second with you the whole time you're there. You'll meet her family. You'll meet her friends. But the one thing you won't meet is any single Filipinas. Now that might sound great to you. Especially after a few days of the best sex you ever had. Which has a way of putting the brain to sleep. And letting a different head do the thinking. Before you even leave, you'll be talking about your future together and maybe even marriage plans. Now take a step back and look at what happened. When you first decided to go online, you were just gonna take a quick peek and have some harmless chat with a few Filipinas. Now you're talking wedding bells and sending support every month. And if you think that can't happen or it'll only happen to the other guy, you're kidding yourself. But what's the problem? You met a great girl and everything's cool, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. If you met the love of your life, I'm truly happy for you. But what if you get here and that woman you invested so much time in, sight unseen, isn't who you thought she was or there's no real chemistry in between you? In that case, you're stuck in a really awkward position and you either have to make a fast getaway with no other options lined up or you have to fake it till you make it. While that sometimes might work out, the odds of finding the woman who's the best match for you would have been higher if you'd done it like this. Instead of spending months of chatting with women you could have disqualified in minutes after meeting in person, just wait until you get here to pick up the phone. You really don't need to know anyone beforehand in order to visit the Philippines. It's easy, and guys do it every day. You'll be amazed at how many interesting women you'll bump into at the mall, on the street, in restaurants, and a lot of Filipinos will try to hook you up with their single relatives. But even if you get here and still have difficulty meeting the right woman, that's when you can go on the dating sites. By waiting until you're here, you can meet the women almost instantly 
and save all that chatting you did back home at 3 a.m. in the morning. You can tell so much more about someone in person than you can over the phone. And you'll be able to interact with 10 times as many women once your boots are on the ground. Why pin all your hopes on a woman you can't see face to face? Having an instant girlfriend might be convenient, but just like instant coffee, it might not be the most satisfying. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So our final email is from Scott P in Iloilo, who seems to have a serious problem. He writes, Dear Miss P, I'm contacting you about a strange situation with my wife. She's in her late 30s and I'm in my late 50s, but I've always taken good care of myself and I look a lot younger than I really am at least until recently. We've been married for three years and had a pretty good marriage for the most part, but things have been happening that make me wonder what's really going on. Almost a year ago, I started gaining a lot of weight and having severe stomach problems, and no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to turn things around. I went to see a doctor, and when the test came back, all they showed was a high level of cholesterol and sodium but they couldn't find anything that might be causing the stomach pain. I was surprised at the results because I watch what I eat and I go to the gym, although not as often as I used to. I resigned myself to the fact that I was just getting older, but then something happened that made me rethink everything. One evening, my wife offered to make me an evening cup of coffee, which I happily accepted, but I wandered into the kitchen just in time to catch her pouring a big tablespoon of white powder into my drink. I could tell by the look on her face and by her body language that I'd caught her doing something sneaky, so I demanded to know what she was doing. She explained that we were out of artificial sweetener, which I'm militant about using, so she substituted sugar. I walked right over to the cupboard, pull out the box of Equal that I knew was there, and demanded an answer, but she insisted she didn't see it. I didn't mention it again after that, but I knew something was up. So even though I rarely go in the kitchen, I started keeping an eye on what she was feeding me. One morning, I caught her frying my eggs in about an inch of oil instead of the Pam spray we always use, and I admit I got really angry and asked her if she was trying to ruin my health. She denied it, of course, but I decided to do an inventory of everything in the kitchen, and I found that the fat-free salad dressing had been replaced with the full-fat version, and the same was true for the milk. It was supposed to be low-fat, but it was whole milk. There were a bunch of other things as well, but you get the point. It became obvious that she was on a secret mission to make me balloon up, so we sat down for a little talk. I half-jokingly reminded her that I didn't have a life insurance policy and that I was worth more to her alive than dead. She claimed she had just gotten lazy with the food, but there are several reasons I don't believe her. One is because she saw me going to the doctor about my weight gain, and yet she did nothing. And the other is because I'll never forget that guilty look on her face as she poured that sugar into my coffee. I replaced all the bad products. And now that she knows I'm monitoring the activities in the kitchen, I've actually started losing weight. And since she's using the air fryer again instead of oil, my stomach pain has subsided as well. The problem is, I don't understand why she did this, and I've never been able to get her to even admit it. I have a hard time thinking she wants to send me to an early grave, but I know what I saw. Any thoughts? Well, I certainly can't say for sure, but... I think I have a pretty good idea, Scott, and although she took it to the extremes, the reason behind it isn't really that uncommon. And no, I don't think she was trying to kill you. There are much more efficient ways than that. I know this is gonna sound stupid, but it's true. In Filipino culture, if a married person tries to look good by working out or watching their weight, the partner might become insecure and convince themselves that their mate is thinking about cheating because why else would they care how they look? They're married! Even if you've never done anything to make her feel that way, I think she's trying to fatten you up so you won't look as attractive to the opposite sex. In your culture, couples want to stay in shape to look attractive for each other. But in our culture, the sad fact is that the opposite is often true. 
You said you looked a lot younger than your age and that you went to the gym. And she might be worried that you leave her when she hits the wall. If she's in her late 30s, she might be starting to see the signs when she looks in the mirror. So why wouldn't she tell you? Why wouldn't she just admit it? Well, in case you haven't noticed, Filipinas aren't very good at discussing emotions. And trying to get us to confess to doing something wrong is an exercise in futility. Now, what she did was definitely shady and potentially even life-threatening. And what you decide to do about it is up to you. But I think she acted out of insecurity rather than malice. Keep trying to communicate with her. And I hope you get it all worked out. Well, that's it for this episode. And I'll be back on Tuesday with something totally new. Till then, folks. Give me a P. Give me an E. Give me an A. What do you got? What you got is the best source of information about life in the Philippines. I can give you the inside scoop about everything you need to know, then cheer you on as you start your overseas adventure. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and consider becoming a patron to receive extra content and exclusive videos. And while you're waiting for the game to resume, why not check out the halftime show? I wish I had bigger pom-poms.